We hope by the end of this video you will have learned something because I'm here at Alcon Precision with Justin from Open Mind and we're going to be talking through some of the features of Hypermill. So Justin, we've been given this part today so we've never seen it before. If I was to machine that out of a solid billet, how would I do it using Hypermill? So, hi. Well, the first thing you, to determine it for me would be work holding. How do you intend to hold it and where can you hold it? And then that will determine what, which is your first side. So I'd be looking for some potential location points or areas where I can use to, to, to hold down for subsequent operations. So we've got us work holding sorted. We've got all the tooling sorted. Now we're on to programming. So from a solid billet, how would you program that from start to finish? And I know before people ask, there will be several different ways we can do this, but let's just go through like one set of each way of how you would program this part. Yes, yeah, so the first obviously initial thing is get as much material off as you can in the first operation, the roughing operation. Um, so you start with the, the largest cutter that's acceptable um, and, and just get it as close as you can to near net shape with the largest, quickest removal tool you can find. So which part of hype mill would I use to rough that out with, say, your big face mill? Right, so we only have really one roughing tool path called 3D Optimized Roughing. And in there, you can choose the different strategies. So there's only really one go-to place for roughing um, in, in, in a normal vertical environment. And in there, you can choose whether it's high feed style or whether it's uh, a trochoidal roughing style. They're all in that one, one, one area. So that must make it pretty easy for people to to program roughing because there's only one and exactly. Hypermill will do the rest for you. Exactly, yeah. So we've roughed that out. Now it's time to get some of the, the pocket material out. What would I be using to remove the bulk of these pockets? Sure. So then, I, then, then you're into potential rest roughing type scenario. So then you're into you're probably end mills or, or, or tip, tip style cutters, something of a much smaller diameter. Really, you want the largest tool you can find that will fit in those areas to get as much material out as quick as possible. We don't want to go too small too soon. We've got rid of all the material now. Now we're down to finishing. Before we start talking about all these little pockets, we need to finish the bulk of this part. So what sort of features would I be using to finish this part? Sure, so you know, in my background, the next steps I'd be looking to do would be some sort of Z level. So you're looking to do all of the sort of vertical surfaces and clear those away, because then that clears up the area for the shallows. So I'd be looking to do some sort of steep. So we have a Z level shape uh, toolpath for doing that. And then we've finished all the Z level. Yeah. And now we're going into the- and Now we're into picking out. We're into detail now, where we start picking different elements, different surfaces on the CAD model, if you like. And how easy is it to do that? using Hypermill? It's, it, I'm going to say it's easy. It's easy because what we try and do is use the model to drive it. So we're trying to not create any geometry. We don't really need to create any boundaries. We just click on the surfaces that we want to machine. If those surfaces aren't good enough, surfacing is within the package anyway. So you can, you can manipulate them or make your own from the original. Now, looking at this part, this has been finished and you cannot tell that different tools have been used. Essentially, it looks like it's been printed. It's a good part. So how does Hypermill get such a nice finish over multiple different tools and tool paths? It, well, that, that's, that's a good, good thing. So you're obviously either into different regions and you could be into different positions if you're doing three plus two. And each time you change tool or change position, you're introducing a potential small error. So what we look at doing is when we pick out a 3D surface, Hypermill will automatically extend the surface so the tool goes past. So then when, you, when you're in a different orientation or different surface, you get this nice blend between the two. The tool doesn't just stop, it goes past. Because in my own experience, there's, there's nothing worse than having such a nice part and then having little like cusps of, of little burrs to try and file off after. That's exactly what that, that's exactly what that minimizes, yeah. Now, obviously on this part as well, we've got some it, there's quite a lot of rads in this part and also there's quite a lot of, um, let's say, awkward tool paths. So is there something that will show me that my tool isn't going to, that my tool can get in where I need to finish? Yeah, well, we do have a model compare so you can see what you've cut and what's left. So it's, it's comparing the, the finished component to where you are. 
Um, with regards to, 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 to the detail, we have uh, um, a three axis and a five axis reed work cycle. So with reed work, you can kind of put down any toolpath layout you want. So if it's a specific, if for aesthetic purposes, you wanted it to flow a certain way, you can, you can allow it to flow a certain way. So you can essentially change the toolpath to get the finish you want, where in other systems, you sort of get the finish they want you to get. Yes. Yeah. Now, sure. if we can just turn this over, because it's just, a couple more points I want to say on there. Just looking at how amazing this part looks. And now, obviously, there is some deep cavities. They're not majorly deep, but they're still deep enough compared to the width. So how would I finish that? So uh, quite a nice feature is you pick the, the, the you, you probably measure the rads off the model. So, you know, let's say it's a ball nose and that will uh, determine the, the largest tool you can do. And you send your tool in. And then in, the, in Hypermill, we can actually tell it whether you can shorten the tool or whether it needs to be longer. Because obviously you want the shortest tool possible to minimize any vibration. Now, I didn't know that, <laughs> as you can probably tell. So as well as obviously when you're machining parts, the, the end goal is the nicest surface finish because that's probably what it'll say on the print. So you're telling me Hypermill will tell me that how much I need my tool stuck out to the minimum level to get right down to the bottom of that. Correct, yeah, in, in, the, in the dialogue message box, it'll calculate the tool path. If it can't complete it because it's not long enough, it'll say your tool's 20 mil, it needs to be 24.7 whatever. Um, and, and the same on the flip side, it will say your tool's 30 mil, it could be 24.7. So I find that really interesting that as well as telling you that your tool isn't long enough, it will also tell you that your tool is too long as well. Yeah, it's a tick box, it's whether you want that on, but for sure, yeah, yeah. No, that really must help with like, well, as you can it see with this. helps to get the finish. This, I said this before we started that, if you just look at this part on the end, that looks like it's just been printed because there's absolutely no tooling marks, there's no joining marks from separate tools. It, the, 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 the other function we've got is called smooth overlap, which is another tick box. And what smooth overlap will do, it will go past the area, the end of the surface, but it will also lift off slightly. So when it does that, then on the neighboring surface that joins it, again, it just, it just all, it's all about getting the smooth blend. So essentially, as well as Hypermill being up there with some of the, the best tool paths on the market, it's also giving you the best ways to get your surface finish, because there's a quote I really want to end this interview on, and it's a quote from you which I find amazing. And it's, the only way you will get a bad surface finish using Hypermill is if your tool isn't sharp. Correct, sir. Now, I think that is such a great statement. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more educational videos, then leave a like and a comment below. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.